welcome back. Thank you for joining me for the continuation of my playthrough of BIOS Genesis from Phil Eklund and Sierra Madre Games. We're ready to continue our journey in the Archean era, see if we can strengthen this poor minimal life form, or if maybe we can develop another form of life. In the previous rounds, I've gone over the rules in as much detail as I could. Continuing from here now, I'm going to go a lot quicker. The rules that I've already talked about, I'm just going to go ahead and play through the game. If something new or a different situation comes up, then I will go into detail again about the new rules or the new situations. But until that comes up, I'm going to speed up the play a little bit to try and pack more rounds in to each video. Let's see what we have in store for us here. Hydrocarbon fog. Oceanic and continental will be active. No more cosmic for now, but the ocean, the coastal is not. And maybe we'll get some continent landforms out now. All right, we're coming down from above, which means we will not. Yes, we will, because there is no active, there's no more left in the ocean. So we'll bring out our first continent refugium, and that will be geothermal zinc of our mana structure. This one seems pretty unstable all the way down to three, but a couple of enzymes could block threes and fours. And we're much better in a warming period, but we're locked into a cold period again this round. And we have a sudden blast of UV radiation. It's going to be an extremophile event that, unfortunately, our poor space bacteria here with photocarboxylation has no metabolism chromosomes to protect it. So our green player's biont will go back and we will get a green enzyme for the green player in compensation. Our poor extinct organism will go off to the side as a trophy. It can help us with gaining victory points at the end of the game. Our UV radiation is not going to cause us any problems because we don't have any organisms out and again we're in a cooling period and that'll be our second one. So we got two in a row now and yellow will be our first player. Yellow and blue cannot assign. Brings us over to red. Red's going to assign its biont to the green rust fumarole and we're going to spend or place two catalysts here to help protect us. Green for its assignment phase is going to move away from the hydrothermal vent and also come over here to the green rust fumarole before we head into our autocatalytic roll I'll make sure to royal the decks of the active rows almost forgot Oop. we're in a cooling period so I want some ones and twos I want to avoid sixes because I need to get another life form out here well, that couldn't have worked any better. Three successes are going to organize mana, and we got doubles, so we can create life. That excellent roll will allow us to organize all three mana. Those enzymes really paid off. And this is going to be Red's organism because it has the most 
enzymes. So red's going to get its first organism. It's a catalyzed marine bacteria, amyloid hydrolysis. It can do amyloid hydrolysis. And we're set up with two entropy chromosomes and one each of the others. That was the only refugium that had bions on it. I did accidentally have one on the alkaline hydrothermal seep, but I took it off because green had lost its organism. We're all set up for our Darwin roll here with our marine bacteria. I didn't get any ones. We did get a five and a six. I'll reroll one because of my specificity chromosome. Oh, we got a one that time. And on this organism, ones will give us yellow catalysts. And our five were protected with our heredity chromosome. We survived our Darwin roll. We're ready to make our purchases. Malaria. I'm sorry, not malaria, but yellow and blue have no purchases to make. Red, definitely going to go for those cytochromes in the ocean. So I'll spend my enzyme. And our cytochromes is a thermoplasma archaea, or archaea. We got a heat shield got fission and we also have the HGT ability and that's going to bring us a step closer to making a macro organism greens turn to make a purchase and it will make a purchase using reds tableau Spend this red catalyst. I was going to purchase the superoxide dismutase. Yeah, that's what I'll do because I would need a yellow enzyme to promote that. So we'll buy the superoxide dismutase, gain some red queen ability, a couple more oxygen shields. Great. We'll get that mutation added on. And that was a much quicker, more succinct round. And we're ready to move on to our next set of 200 million years. We're ready to begin our next 200 million year segment of the Archean era. This has been a really cold formation of the Earth. We've been in global cooling for most of the game. Let's see if we keep that up. Now this is not going to change our heating or cooling pattern. The supercontinent Ur. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. If you know different, please let me know. A lot of landforms are going to become active. Only the cosmic is going to stay inactive. This is going to bring some, some more items into play. And two from below. So more from our active continent landform. Two more. And that's going to bring out the eutectic brine. Mana structure, force fives and sixes, but none of the thing causes enzyme death, so that's nice. We're still in a cooling period. And our other form is the warm pond, really active in a warming period. And again, 
only sixes are going to cause enzyme death, so we could block off this four and five quite safely, but only three in the mana structure. And we're going to have a UV radiation blast with a rating of three, so we can have up to three mutations. Luckily, our marine bacteria, amyloid hydrolysis over here, only has two. So we're safe. And our first player will be green this turn. Okay, green. What do we want to do with green here? We can assign one Biont out. And I think I might want to make a preemptive strike here and actually assign green as a parasite to amyloid hydrolysis. Because, thanks to the living rules being mentioned to me, parasite, AI parasite specifically, cannot become hyperparasites. So if I can latch my green player on as a parasite, they can't become a hyperparasite. They could supplant the parasite if they could get more cubes. Let's see what we got here. Our green player has salmonella that can steal blue and green. Well, we have red and yellow. Ah, here we go. Here's a red. Cyanobacteria. So we can steal the red, and it's going to cause an O2 spike also, but that's nothing to worry about. We don't have any other organisms in the oceanic landform row. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Let's attach ourselves as a parasite. We'll attach our cyanobacteria. Steal our red superoxide dismutase cube. And normally that would bother me because I couldn't use my red queen ability, but hey, that's my buddy, the green player there, so I don't have to worry about it. I do need to obtain another red cube because I'm close to flipping this into a macroorganism. Next we would have yellow, who can only steal green and blue, or green and red. It cannot steal yellow and red, so it is incapable of supplanting the viroid. can do green and red, and yellow and red. So that one is a little more dangerous. It could take me out. So is it going to be the viroid side, or the other side? Here's the moment of truth for amyloid hydrolysis. Is the virus going to be able to attach? We'll, we'll find out right now. One, two, or three. This side stays here, and it will knock me out. Anything higher, and it will not. Perfect. It will not, because it will use this side, and that can't supplant by just taking one cube. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, there's only one card in that deck. I'm not sure what it is about me and remembering to royal these decks as soon as I make the landforms active. Not sure what my problem is there, but at least I'm remembering it before purchases occur. That brings us to our red player to do his assignment phase. He's got two entropy chromosomes in that organism, so he can assign all, all of his bionts out. Now I want to create catalysts, because I'm going to need them to make purchases and hopefully flip this organism, because my cytochromes, my yellow mutation there has fission on it, which would allow me to make two purchases. And I think 
geothermal zinc is the place to go because it's the most unstable, which means I might have a chance of organizing and disorganizing and getting getting some catalysts. And we're in a cooling period still, and ones and twos is the best on any of the cards. So I'm going to go for the most unstable one and try and get as many catalysts out of this as I can. That's it for the assignment phase. It's now time to do the autocatalytic roll on geothermal zinc. I got those two biots, so I'm ready to go. Ideal situation is I roll uh, two dice that have a one or a two on them, and then the other two dice have three or higher on them, because that would allow me to organize two and disorganize two and get two catalysts out of this roll. Oh. <laughs> uh, I did it. I guess I should just call my rolls every time from here on out, because I got two ones that will let me disorganize it, and I got the fours that will allow me, I mean, to organize it and then disorganize it right away. Perfect. We can organize two. I'm going to organize a green and we'll organize a blue. Immediately disorganize it and gain those catalysts. Have our catalysts that we gained. And there's a reason I chose the green, which will hopefully become clear here in a few moments. Again, that was our only autocatalytic roll. Now it's time to do our Darwin roll and see if we're going to survive to be able to turn this thing into a macroorganism. First up would be green. Our cyanobacteria has to make its Darwin roll first. Well, that is successful. No fives and sixes, so it'll stay in place. And then we got our big boy here, amyloid hydrolysis. All right. I got enough dice. Four, one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. That, well, it doesn't look too bad. So we got a one, and we got some triples. That's going to give us two yellow catalysts. Perfect. More catalysts, the better. We're going to need them to make purchases. We'll add those to Red's tableau. Now we have two errors that could cause atrophy. Oh. Actually, I can re-roll both. I forgot that I had that other yellow cube up there. So two specificity chromosomes allow me to re-roll both. Oh, no! That's terrible! All I needed was one of them to not <laughs> come up as a five or a six. Ugh! That, that's brutal. That's going to keep me from organizing into a macroorganism. I do have the one heredity chromosome that's going to protect me. Darn. But that's going to wipe out my cytochrome because first I have to take away from mutation cubes. That's a bummer. Now we're going to need to find another yellow cube. That'll send cytochromes back to the home row here in the ocean. Oh, that Darwin roll sucked. That changes... Yeah, that definitely changes my plan of what I was going to do. Now I need to reformulate. First purchase, though, is going to go to our green player, who I moved out of the way here. So our green player is going to go first with purchases. For green's purchase, I'm going to have green promote superoxide dismutase. And I do not have a red cube. 
Do I want to use both yellow or do I use both green? I think I will use both both green to equal a red. Let's see what our promoted side gives us. Ah, endoplasmic reticulum. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna retain our red queen. We're gonna get an O2 shield, DNA protection, and we become a spore. Those two new abilities, the DNA air shield and the spore symbol. The DNA air shield, the blue shield symbol, will protect me during the Darwin rolls. Normally when you do your Darwin roll, a 5 or a 6 causes an error, which needs to either be protected by a heredity chromosome, the blue ones, or the organism suffers an atrophy for each one. With the DNA air shield in place, that means only sixes will cause that. Fives no longer do, so that greatly reduces the chance of an error occurring and causing atrophy during the Darwin roll with the DNA air shield in place. The spore symbol, the little black dot with the squiggly lines coming out of it, that allows me to assign bionts as if all rows are home rows. So normally you can only assign your bionts to an active row or the home row of one of your organisms. With the spore ability active now, every row is a home row, so you're not limited to just active or home rows anymore. You can assign a bionts to any of them. Green has made its purchase. Yellow and blue are not actively attached to an organism, so they have no purchases to make. That brings us over here to red, and I want to make sure that I don't have any more any more problems with errors occurring, and I might want to purchase this mRNA here and to have another blue cube, but would that make it dangerous to these organisms? Let's see, this one can take red and green and blue and green and this one can take red and green and red and yellow so the virus is still dangerous to me if I purchase the blue because it can go after the red and the yellow this can go only after red and green so this one would not be able to supplant me I would still have the danger of the virus coming after me but I will do that I will purchase the mRNA with the red player to get another safety net, another blue. Oh, also, let's take a look at mRNA here. It's going to give us an additional red queen ability. And gametic meiosis. That's this flavor text, but this is the uh, sex symbol. The sex symbol that's on mRNA there, that mutation allows me, before I make a purchase in the next round, any mutation deck that's in an active row means I can, or, or in a home row, I can royal the deck one time, which can come in handy if there's a certain color I'm looking for and it's not available at that time. What I'm not sure of which I'll have to look up is, it says I can royal a deck in an active row or a home row. With the spore ability, I consider all of them a home row for the purpose of assigning, but does that also apply to royaling the deck with the sex characteristic? I did a quick search on uh, bdg.com. I didn't find 
anything in the forums initially. Admittedly, I didn't do a deep dive. I didn't go into the living rules and check everything out. But I didn't find anything initially to answer my question about using the sex ability with the spore ability. So I posted a question on the rules forum and hopefully I'll get an answer before I start filming the next round. Otherwise that'll conclude our purchases for all of our players ending this 200 million year segment which is I think that this was the next to the last 200 million years in the Archean era. Our amyloid hydrolysis marine bacteria here is gaining shape, gaining more cubes. I really need to get a red cube on my side of the organism and away from the parasite, so I might have to red queen my red cube back to the endoplasmic reticulum there and then that would allow me to further convert this bacteria into a macroorganism. But I'm also going to have to consider whether I want to do that and take my chances with these parasites stealing some of my cubes, but I might actually want them to steal some cubes because then their biomes would be available when I flip the card. I'm not too sure. Then I would have endosymbionts in there to help further protect the organism when I do turn it into a macroorganism. I got a lot to think about before I make that decision, but this concludes this round and will take us into our next 200 million year segment. I'm ready to get into our next round. It may seem like I'm a little off because it's been a few days out in the real world. I had to work two days. I'm in the medical field, so those are two days, 12 hour shifts each day. So there's been a gap between the last time I played and this time. So with that being said, give me just a little bit of extra leeway. It doesn't have to be a lot. If I make mistakes, I make mistakes, but give me a little bit of leeway. I appreciate that. Let's get started. Let's see what our event is. And judging by the color of the back of the card, this is going to be our last 200 million year segment of the Archean Era. The Clathrate Gun. All right, we got a lot of landforms that are active. And it's the exact same three that were active before. But this time, I'm actually going to remember to royal the decks right away. And we're going to have our first smite event caused by acid ocean upswelling shutdown. What's well, a mouthful? So we're going to have our first smite event. We had one in the very first round of gameplay, but there were no landforms out yet, so it didn't affect anything. So this will be the first time that we actually get to see what a smite event does. And there's one symbol on there, so that's one smite. So we'll start at the top and then work our way across and down for each uh, refugium. I'm going to pick this one up to show you. This is one of the three special ones in the game. And you see this green shielded symbol which represents it being impervious to the smite event. So this landform, the deep hot biosphere, and the one directly below it, the hydrothermal vent, will not be affected by smite. All of the additional ones that are unprotected are going to lose the first cube in their mana structure. Thematically, the smite event represents a radiation surge that causes damage to the refugiums. And what they would lose first for each symbol, and again this is a one symbol smite, 
is they would lose their rightmost enzyme. None of these refugium have any enzymes placed on the circles. So that means they're going to lose mana. And they lose it according to what the mana structure is at the bottom left. So whichever one is first is going to be lost. And this one it's red. We have blue. So we're going to lose one of the organized mana. Here it is red, blue, and also blue. And those go back into the bowl, go back into the soup. And each of our five lower refugiums in the coastal and continent landforms now have one less mana. Next up on the clathrate gun are plate tectonics, which is going to give us a refugium starting from the bottom. And that's on our active continent landform, and that will be our last one of those. And we have Tholin storm clouds. Man structure, fairly stable. We can block it with just one, then we don't have to worry about sixes. This is a pretty good one to go to. No special need to go there, but it only produces on ones and twos during both a warming and cooling period. I need to get two yellow and two green mana. Next we have an O2 spike that occurs. The red players Bacteria and the green player's parasite both have at least one entropy chromosome which is going to protect them from that single O2 spike. That's nothing to be concerned about here. We are now back into a warming phase and the red player will go first. For the assignment phase, red's going to be our first player. That player already has two bions on the geothermal zinc. It's really unstable. It has three disorganized men on it. I'm going to leave both of them there so I can roll four dice because I want to generate catalysts for the red player because they're going to need them because we're close to going to macroorganism and we're going to need them to purchase organs. So I'm going to leave those there and hopefully maybe we even roll bad enough in a sense, but good for us that will organize some mana and knock it off and the bions off because we'll get enzymes in compensation. Sorry, we'll get catalysts in compensation for the red bions being knocked off. Our green player will go to the warm pond because we're in a warming phase and the first four numbers are going to organize mana for us and we want green to either get really lucky and then maybe flip this into an organism or at least maybe gain a catalyst themselves. Our yellow parasite can attach to green and blue and green and red so it's not capable of supplanting the green parasite because it cannot take two cubes. But our viroid virus Thyroid's green and red, that's no good to it, but this yellow and red is good because it can steal the red and the yellow cube and supplant our cyanobacteria. So I'll roll a dice to see if it's going to stay on this virus side or flip to the other. One to three, it stays on the virus side and starts causing me more headaches. Four, five, or six. It goes to the other side and cannot supplant. Perfect. Six. Our organism is safe from additional parasite attack at this moment. That worked out good for us. And we'll do the autocatalytic roll. We got red on geothermal zinc and green on the warm pond. All right. Could use a couple of ones, twos, or threes, and then some higher numbers. Well, okay then. 
we managed to organize everything and then the three causes one to disorganize and I don't have any hmm which mana color do I want blue or green let me take a look there are no items available for purchase right now that are blue but maybe they'll be coming up so I'll choose to disorganize one of the blue and get the enzyme to the red player and now we have to do the autocatalytic roll for the warm pond before we do that autocatalytic roll I did roll doubles so I could flip this to an organism and it would give it another target for these parasites to choose from also and make it less likely that it would attach to me and maybe give me another shot at creating a macroorganism in the future I'm gonna go ahead and do that we'll flip that and make a new microorganism for the red player also this blue cube goes back to the soup because it was disorganized and I will attempt to flip this now we don't have any specificity chromosomes to allow us to re-roll but we do have a heredity chromosome for the PNA template which is a peptide nucleic acid pond bacteria and that is going to move over to the reds tableau our next autocatalytic roll is for the warm pond and the green player and we got double fours which is going to disorganize no it's going to organize to and disorganize to both of these mana because of the four and we're in a warming period organize and then disorganize again giving the green player two catalysts I did roll doubles and I could flip the warm pond into an organism but it would be an organism with one green biont in it and no protection so most likely with the Darwin roll it would be wiped out so there's no need to do that you can see the area I have up here it has the red players two organisms the pond and the marine bacteria this blank spot right here is where the green player tableau is so that's who these enzymes floating out here on the edge are and now we will do the Darwin rolls in player order starting with the red start with amyloid hydrolysis our marine bacteria our big complex organism here we have dice for the two bionts in it and all the cubes that are not diseased and we have to remember that we do have a DNA error shield so this time only sixes will count as errors we only got one six that's beneficial to us we did get triple twos that triple will cause a red no I'm sorry a yellow a yellow catalyst to metabolize the threes fours and fives will do nothing and the six I could re-roll it because of my specificity chromosomes and I might as well maybe I'll get a one and pick up another or I could roll a four or five and end up with triples also another catalyst I ended up with another two it's not going to give me anything but it's definitely not going to hurt me amyloid hydrolysis really survived that Darwin roll well now let's do PNA template the PNA template has two bionts and two cubes well that was a pretty <laughs> pretty darn good roll considering it's gonna get a lot of catalysts out of that the two ones and we have two 
metabolism chromosomes. So for each of these ones, we will generate two chromosomes, or two catalysts. So that's four blue catalysts with that organism, and the triples will generate another one for five total blue catalysts. And then the five is an error, but we do have one heredity chromosome, nothing to worry about. Now that I have six blue catalysts, it brings up something that I have not mentioned to this point. The catalyst limit in a player's tab below is 12 of a particular color divided by the number of players. Now I know this is a solitaire game and I'm the only one playing, but there's two players so that 12 divided by 2 is 6, therefore we can have 6 catalysts of any given color in our tableau. And finally we have our Darwin roll for the cyanobacteria, the green player. Two ones are safe and one six which is an error, it does not have any specificity chromosomes to re-roll and it does not have any blue heredity chromosomes to protect it. So it's going to lose that diseased cube. This again brings up a new situation that we haven't dealt with. That red cube comes from the unpromoted side of the endoplasmic reticulum. That red cube is going to go away. Does that eliminate this promoted organism as well? Does it still need that red base cube in order to survive? I'll check the rules and be right back. First, before I answer that question, I just got done reading over the living rules. And these two ones are going to cause metabolism because of the cyanobacteria does have a red metabolism chromosome. And it's going to be the same color as the organism or the cyanobacteria which is green. So that will generate two catalysts. And these catalysts are awarded to the tableau pool that the organism resides in, which is the red player's tableau, which will award these two green catalysts to the red player. Now we did have that error that is going to take the red cube off of the cyanobacteria, which was the base cube before promotion of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now the rules state if it loses, if a promoted back, sorry, if a promoted mutation loses its cube that has a plus under it, in this case the yellow one, then it would be demoted. If it loses its other cube, it's unaffected and stays in play. But at any time, if it loses that yellow cube now, since there's no red cube left, then it's wiped out and it would go back to the home row, which is the ocean land form for amyloid hydrolysis. Also, the green parasite does not detach or go away, even though it no longer has any of its disease cubes. Yes, it needed a cube to attach, but there's no disattachment or disengaging or extinction because it loses the cubes because it still has its biont there. Now I could use my Red Queen attack to steal the Biont off of it and that would cause it to be extinct, but it stays in place until it's either driven to extinction or until it is supplanted by another parasite. Our yellow and blue player do not have any Darwin rolls to make, taking us into our purchase round, starting with our red player who has Biont's in two separate organisms. Our red player is only one red 
cube away from being able to purchase a macroorganism, which is the lamp shells. And we can see that on the lamp shell card. It's going to need a blue, a green, two yellow, and a red. Well, I have the blue and the green and the two yellow, but I don't have any red undiseased cubes. So I'm definitely going to purchase the RNA polymerase to give me a red cube. So hopefully I can convert into a macroorganism in the next round. And it's going to give me another HDT and an additional red queen. We'll purchase the RNA polymerase. Move some things up to make room for it. It is in place. And I don't have a red catalyst, so I'll spend two of my blue with chemo selectivity to equal the one red that I need. Red also has the PNA template, the pond bacteria, and he has two red bionts in it, and he can make one purchase for each biont in an organism. So you can make two purchases for this one. And we're going to do that because we have a green and a blue in there. And we have seaweed that only needs three green and one blue. So if we can secure two more green, then that will give us another possible organism to flip. First we'll buy the Calvin cycle. It's going to give us a red queen, an O2 shield, and it's going to become have the spore ability. The Calvin cycle will be attached to the PNA template for the cost of one green catalyst. By purchasing the Calvin cycle, it also uncovered another green mutation in this active land form that we're definitely going to buy because that'll give us the cubes that we need. And we'll purchase Bacteriorhodopsin. Bacteriorhodopsin. I think I got that right. And that's going to give us HGT and the spore ability again. But we're going to have an oxygen spike. The oxygen spike attacks all organisms in the same home row as the organism that the mutation is being attached to. Our PNA template is from the continent landform, but we don't have any other organisms out that are continent based. So the O2 spike will not affect anyone. And the severity of that O2 spike attack is equal to the number of entropy chromosomes that the organism has. Now I'm not sure without looking at the rules if these cubes that I just brought into play count, but if that were the case then this would be a level 3 O2 spike against all organisms in the continent land form. I'll look that up to get clarification on it and see if I can find anything. But in this case, we don't have to worry about it because there are no organisms that share the continent land form with PNA template. Red has made a purchase for each of its bionts. Green has bionts in two organisms. First, I'm going to have it make a purchase for amyloid hydrolysis, spend one red catalyst to promote RNA polymerase to the promoted side. And we're going to get a nerve net. We keep our red queen and our sex, but we also now get the nucleus ability and another DNA error shield that we already had. 
And we have an extra blue undiseased cube. Oops. I realize I made the same mistake that I did before. I have to spend from the tab below that the organism's in, so I'll be spending from the green. I put that red back, and I'll spend... Well, I have more blue, so I'll spend two blue to equal the red that I needed for that nerve net. That symbol that had the nucleus flavor text under it, is actually the chameleon ability and that means that the organism has a nucleus and it can form a purchase with a single catalyst of any color so that organism is no longer worried about what color it can just use a single catalyst of any color to make any purchase now I made a mistake here Amyloid hydrolysis has cyanobacteria as a parasite. When I made a purchase with the red player for amyloid hydrolysis, the parasite is supposed to go immediately after the host. So it, I chose to do amyloid hydrolysis first, like I did in this round, then cyanobacteria should have went before I moved on to the PNA template. I'm not too worried about it in this situation since our parasite is actually another player, me, working together to try and create life. If it was one of the AI controlled parasites then the mistake would have been different and what would have been purchased may have been completely different because we'd have to roll and see which one that it would try and purchase. But in this case, since we're working together, I did make a mistake, but the outcome is mitigated by the fact that I'm working together anyway. I'm not another player competing against. We'll go ahead and make our purchase for cyanobacteria now, even though it's out of order. I went back and reviewed the footage to right after Amyloid Hydrolysis had made its purchase of the unpromoted card that's on the other side of the nerve net. And Cytochromes, this yellow mutation here, was available already before I even moved on to the PNA template. Because the PNA template bought both of its mutations from the active continent landform. So this yellow one here would not have been visible or able to have been purchased when cyanobacteria would have had its turn. So we're ignoring that like it's not there. And I'm going to purchase the cytochromes with one catalyst, one yellow catalyst. So cyanobacteria will have its own mutation now. Cytochromes. It's going to get an additional heat shield. It's going to be able to have the fission ability and make two purchases, and it's gaining the HGT ability. Purchases are complete. The red and the green player have made purchases for each of their biomes. Yellow and blue are not attached and have no ability to make purchases right now. That will conclude this 200 million year segment of the Archean era, which is also the final segment of the Archean era, and we will be moving into the Proterozoic era. We have a very large organism here, and a small one that might be able to turn into a macro-organism also. But this all hinges on our next event, what our turn order is, if malaria Viroid, virus, or proteobacteria will attach and steal cubes and keep us from turning into a macroorganism. We'll have to wait to find out in our next round.